Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for being uh, here tonight. I, I think it's great uh, that we have, you know, not only this research event, but also this, this topical focus on, on uh, the, the uh, climate change and the green transition. Um, and, and I really, again, want to thank the organizers, want to thank Banco de España, want to thank Barcelona School of Economics and, and UPF. And I also want to thank Rafael Schönle for putting together uh, this um, sort of uh, uh, final event of, of our annual meeting. And I'll be speaking about, if, yeah, I'll be speaking about uh, a project of the BIS Innovation Hub, Project Gaia, enabling climate risk analysis with machine learning. I also want to thank Maria Molero, who's our project lead on this. She's there in the audience. Um, what I'll be talking about is, is threefold. I'll be introducing a bit the BIS Innovation Hub. I'll be focusing on the need for more data on uh, carbon emissions and, and uh, uh, you know, sustainable uh, data. And then I'll present this project where we try to fill some data gaps. So let's start with the BIS Innovation Hub. Um, the Innovation Hub is not a research department. It is really an applied technological workshop, a startup, and it, it develops applied technological solutions for the central banking community. It connects central banks and the stakeholders' needs in the digital economy. Uh, the work approach is building practical solutions as proofs of concepts or prototypes uh, while exploring the limits and benefits of applying innovation to significant themes that are relevant to central banks. And, and the goal is really to come up with public goods, with open source code, with freely available data, with solutions that can benefit the wider community in, you know, whatever, sort of in, in, in many aspects. So it could be a payment system prototype, or it could be a tool to make data freely available. We have a number of projects. You can, you can Google that on, 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 the, uh, on the BIS website. And, and the hub is actually an umbrella organization centered at the BIS in Basel, but with a number of centers around the world. Uh, we have five that are already operational in London, Switzerland, Hong Kong, Singapore, and in Stockholm. We have a strategic partnership with the New York Fed and the New York Innovation Center. Uh, then there will be two more centers. One will be in Toronto, and one, the Eurosystem Center, which I have the honor to head, will open very soon. It will have two locations, Frankfurt and Paris, true to the European compromise. And uh, our pro initial project portfolio will have uh, three projects. Uh, we have a subtech and regtech um, a project where we uh, build uh, an, an analysis platform for cryptocurrencies, a decentralized finance. Um, we have a cybersecurity project where we look into post-quantum encryption and how we can safeguard the privacy of the payment system uh, uh, against the threat. And we have a green finance project that I'll zoom in in more detail just a bit later. So let me motivate what we do a bit. Um, the, uh, it's commonly known that you know, central bank mandates are, are very diverse across jurisdictions, but broadly speaking, all uh, is to keep, have a, a mandate to keep prices stable, and most uh, have the mandate to monitor financial stability through different tools such as prudential supervision or financial, uh, of financial institutions. And, and here, there is a, a a global rising trend that acknowledges that climate change comes with a number of risks. And there are two main, channel, main channels. One is physical risks arising from damage to property, infrastructure, and land. And the second is transition risks, um, which result from changes in climate policy, technology, and consumer and market sentiment during the adjustment to a low carbon economy. And so both the physical risks and the climate transition risks um, sort of necessitate to vamp up our climate risk exposure monitoring. Uh, for example, the ECB guideline on climate-related environmental risks is, is a recent example which establishes supervisory expectations relating to how such risk should be managed 
and how it should be disclosed. Um, as a result, the sort of the, the investment industry has a growing demand for green finance data, such as benchmarks, analytics, and metrics. Uh, but nonetheless, sort of the reliability and the comparability of the data remains still to be established uh, because existing commercial data solutions have quality issues, have transparency issues, and come with many, many sharing restrictions. So to this extent, the recently published NGFS final report on building uh, data gaps points out the following key challenges to closing climate data gaps, which are auditability or traceability of data, relevant benchmarks, a need for stakeholders to understand the methods used by data providers because most of the available data relies on internal models and internal estimations, incomplete information, and, of course, significant costs for granular data. So according to the FSB July 2021 report on the availability of data with which to monitor and assess climate-related risks uh, to financial stability, uh, differences in the construction of environmental, social, and governance indicators, ESG ratings, across providers prevent them from supplying consistent and comparable information on transition risk across firms and jurisdictions. So as a result, and, and with the aim of countering financial greenwashing, some policymakers are exploring the need for regulatory safeguards, such as the conduct of business and transparency rules for ESG data providers. And there is more to it. Many International standard setting bodies have developed action plans to include climate data considerations in their objectives. And if we look closer, uh, many of these initiatives are indeed focusing on making climate related data and disclosure fr fr frameworks uh, uh, more transparent, more accessible. Some examples include the more than known work of the FSB task force on climate related financial disclosures to improve and increase reporting of climate-related financial information, the NGFS work on bridging data gaps, which aims to share best practices and develop climate risk management, or the Basel Committee and Irving Fisher Committee reports on sustainable finance data for central banks. We at the BIS support these efforts broadly through our own analytical work and banking services, uh, the projects of the BIS Innovation Hub, and the activities of the BIS committees and hosted association. Um, we, we also participate in external forums, such as, for example, the NGFS and the Sustainab Sustainable Insurance Forum, SIF. Uh, and certainly, uh, we also have a number of self-standing events, for example, the, the well-known Greens One conference that uh, we, we organize every year. And last, and, and that brings me closer to home, the Innov BIS Innovation Hub has a number of projects on green finance. One is Project Genesis, uh, which aims to develop a prototype of tokenized green bonds for retail investors via mobile apps. Second is Project Veritas, which investigates how we can integrate existing regulatory data and existing climate data sources uh, in, in an in a easily accessible and, and visually appealing form. And third, Project Gaia, which is being developed by the BIS Innovation Hub Eurosystem Center and which aims to enable climate risk analysis leveraging on machine learning and artificial intelligence. Let me, let me next zoom on what exactly it is that we do here. So as I mentioned before, disclosures are progressively being standardized, but there is a gap for historical information uh, and with data not yet affected by a monetary standard. This means that certain information will remain in an unstructured format, PDFs scattered around web pages in, the, in you know, many financial institutions, and they will remain there for an indeterminate time. So this requires analysts to go through very long web-based research and then a lengthy manual process of collecting data for analysis. And this is where Project Gaia starts. We, we aim at levering, leveraging um, this sustainability-related self-reported data in company reports and to structure it. The solution is we want to build a global repository 
where corporate climate-related reports are stored in textual form in a way that helps analysts find the required information with ease. Then leveraging this using data scraping techniques combined with machine learning techniques, information from the reports will be extracted to have them in a structured format, i.e. in a database that is usable for analysis. And the project will be performed following an iterative agile approach and will count on the collaboration of our two project partners, the Banco de España and the Bundesbank. Um, and we will, together with them, uh, work uh, iteratively, churn out a solution, collect feedback and participate as end users to test the product at an early stage. And then later, we will, we will reach out to institutions around the globe, to uh, the research community and analyst community and, and, and you know, together see how we can uh, really produce a usable, uh, high quality database on climate related information. Let me jump into the, the technology. So the, there are three stages of, of what we do from a technological perspective. Uh, first, um, we collect the online reports. So all the PDFs that are on corporate's web pages will be collected. Um, and, and there will be actually, because this is not mandatory for historical information and for all variables, we will use a, a variety of reports. So for example, integrated reports, annual financial reports, financial statements, ESG reports, corporate governance reports, and pillar three reports. Um, in this phase, the team will focus on retrieving and cleaning the data. The PDS will have to be processed to create a database allowing for full search. Um, the universe of the initial sample will be uh, the, uh, will inc include a list of large internationally active financial institutions. Um, and the language of the reports will be restricted to English and later we will add more and more languages. Um, and, and yeah, and, and so have the database grow. At this stage, central banks can leverage access to company level climate data to quickly identify excerpts for risk analysis. So this is still text, not a database that you could use in a regression, for example. Um, in, in, that will come in the next stages. In the second stage, we, we take these non-structured reports and convert them into formatted reports. Using a script, the documents will be pr processed to extract the text and to create excerpts. The script treats each paragraph, each table, and each bullet point as, as a logical element of a document. And, and in this stage, we will build on work of uh, researchers at the Banco de España, Angel Ivan Moreno and Teresa Caminero. In their 2020 working paper, for example, is, uh, is titled Application of Text Mining to the Analysis of Climate-Related Disclosures. And um, here, for example, they describe the process as follows. Uh, the process involves extracting the text from the reports, partitioning them into excerpts, tagging specific expressions according to a set of rules, mainly based on lexicons and regular expressions, and finally, indexing the words and text in the excerpts to allow querying the excerpts using a simple query language. So this labeling process essentially gives a, a logic to the text. You look for a number of keywords, you, you look where you find them, you see whether these keywords are accompanied by quantitative information. So it could be CO2 emissions, the keyword, and then a number that would go into the database. But it could also be something more qualitative, like the number of board meetings on, on these issues per year. And all of this needs to be structured so that, that it can you know, be found in the documents and then go into a database. Um, so in this way, the um, so right, we can we can collect relevant variables and 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 uh, metrics and target recommendation. So, for example, you know all all the scopes on CO two emissions um, and 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 related information. In the um, in the let me, yeah. Finally, and here is where the machine learning uh, comes in. A rule-based model using natural language processing technique to automatically label the terms and extract the information will be used. So the same recommended disclosures used for the previous step will be taken into consideration for this part of the process. 
So we will have an iterative solution uh, where we will define rules um, and, and so, so it will be like a, um, a supervised machine learning model where we where iteratively improve the fit of, a, of, a, of, of how the information is extracted um, via you know, uh, some test data and, and you know, iterative calibration. And then, this is the last step, so again, this is supervised machine learning to extract all the data from reports by training data. Again, it's, it's, it's using queries based on sort of the initial inputs, the, 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 um, the keywords that you give and, and data that you want to collect. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so and this is sort of how you go from this unstructured data, collecting the PDF, making the PDFs readable to a database format. Um, the output of the project, here is, here is an example for some Spanish data. Um, we'll have a high quality and easy access company level climate data that is open source, that can be freely accessed on the web. Um, and there is one way of making it available to researchers. And then there is another way of sort of visualizing it for uh, you know, a broader audience for press. Uh, here on the right-hand side, we, we have uh, one example of such a, a visualization tool. And of course, we will accompany this with a report summarizing the findings of the project, uh, you know, also discussing the technological issues that were encountered, how sensitive the, the uncovered metrics are when it comes to greenwashing. So we can, for example, look into hard data, those are CO2 emissions, and compare that with softer data, which is, uh, how many times is, is you know, climate change mentioned in a report, and we can sort of make a quantitative guess of how much hard, sort of how, how the correspondence between actual climate change efforts that would be reflected in the hard data uh, there is, and, and how much uh, uh, talk there is about uh, addressing these issues. And so we can sort of get a view of how sensitive all of this is to greenwashing. Um, so let me conclude here. Um, uh, although significant process has been done with international climate-related initiatives, this area of studies is swiftly evolving, and for this reason, we as central banks need to really think about the framework of our work, and foremost, this requires to have good data to be able to assess the uh, risks. And this project aims at filling important data gaps with the use of cutting-edge technology, it will provide the fertile ground for quantitative analysis, which is a prerequisite for solid decision-making, and I also hope very much of interest to researchers around the globe. Thank you very much.